Hey, welcome to episode 20 of It's Not My Fault, the OSG podcast is not popular. My name is Justin. As usual, my name is still Helen. Um, guess what? Chicken butts. No, 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 seriously, get, get, guess what? Justin, you read some manga. Uh, 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 well, I did finish a manga, but 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 that's not that's not it. Get, guess who, you know what? Forget the guessing. Uh, I, I'm actually watching Shirobako. Justin, we know you're watching Shirobako. <laughs> Okay, okay, but but did you know I'm halfway through Shirobako? That is what the script says, yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but we okay, use the yeah. script because we can't remember everything, like, by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> look look at us admitting just the status of podcasting we are. But anyways, um, but yeah, I've been watching Shirobako. Um, I finished Ghost and the Lady. Um, I have not been... I've been a little bit behind on the winter stuff, unfortunately. You'll be proud of me. I went to a comic book store today. Um, for anyone in the D.C. area, it's called Phantom Comics, and they're really, really cool people. Um, and I actually bought the first volume of The Ghost and the Lady while I was there. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Since Please Kod- enjoy it. Kodansha has a free preview chapter of all of their manga on their website, so I checked out the one for The Ghost and the Lady, and I was like, I actually like this. Like, It's weird, but I think I can groove to it. So I picked it up when I was at Phantom for a book signing today. I was the book signing was for a comic called Newsprints by um, Ruzu, who also does the webcomic Saint for Rent. And the people at this comic book store are just really nice. It's like I want to support you guys, so let me just buy lots and lots of books. So, so two things: one, always see if you can find a free preview, so you can actually check out the manga. You can go to the official site and find it. Then, two, support your local comics. Yes. And Kodansha has these free previews up. This manga usually does for their digital series. Crunchyroll does it for their series, which are all digital anyway. So that's three of the main publishers right there. So, oh, and um, a lot of times if the manga is available for Kindle, you can get um read a free preview. Just click like send free preview to so and so's iPhone, and it'll let you read the free preview in the Amazon Cloud Reader if you have that. Um, add-on installed um you can do that um comiXology sometimes has previews who am i forgetting uh there's lots of ways to get at least little previews these days which is what the manga industry should be doing yeah pretty much um well okay since you want to go on and attack my script let me attack yours i guess you're catching up to that one show on netflix Voltron, Voltron, Voltron. uh well, uh, it's the second season, right? Yeah, it's the second half. They basically did a split core thing. And I, oh, I finished okay. it already since I was really worried about finding untagged spoilers on the internet. So I just went ahead and watched as much as I could. Mm. Sh- should I finally get into Voltron? Voltron's pretty fun. It um, it definitely feels like an American-style cartoon with the humor. Like, um, Like, there's an episode where someone has to go into the belly of a space whale, basically. And I was like... This reminds me a lot of the Magic School Bus episode where they go inside the human body for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got to do research on the uh, blood cells, you know? I think that's one of the episodes, if I'm not mistaken. This was this had far more fart humor than the Magic School Bus episode did. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely feels very Americanized in a lot of its humor. But it's not necessarily bad. It just seems to skew a little young. But I am genuinely enjoying it. I never saw the original Beast King Go Lion. Uh, and Pidge is the best character. Pidge is just the best character. Hmm. Well, maybe maybe I'll watch it eventually on my large watching list. Yeah, I was gonna say your backlog is pretty huge. Yeah, it's well, I'm I'm, I'm gonna bet some some people has have a bigger backlog than me, but but yeah, I, hopefully I'll clear it at some point. Admittedly, mine's pretty large too. We'd have to compare. Mine is color coordinated by site the videos are streaming on and listed in order from shortest to longest so hmm. it's efficient yeah like okay yeah um okay so we talked a little bit about what we've been up to let's let's get into some news because a lot of news has happened since uh, we last spoke no, we're not talking political news we're talking just anime news here not 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 political news not not political news definitely not that yet yet 
<laughs> so one thing that's made me happy, and probably some other people happy, is that Yamada-kun and the Seven Witches is going to be ending soon. Yay! And it's not that I hate the manga, it's just that we've had a couple of points where the series probably should have ended already. I think the mangaka has admitted that um, she was originally planning to end the series at the end of its first really big arc, but it was popular, so it kept going. And it definitely shows a bit, so... Um, it's going to end, it looks like, sometime in February. So Justin and I are hoping to do a podcast episode, which is going to be partially a spoiler cast on Yamada-kun, since there's a lot to there's talk about There's a lot to series. unpack. There is just a lot there to is talk a lot, cause I have to. There's a lot of characters to talk about, because I'll let you guys in on a secret. It's not so much Yamada and the Seven Witches. It's more like Yamada and the Seven Witches raised to another power. So, and then you have to factor in how many times they've like tried to switch everything or revert things back to how it used to be. So you start. Oh, I'm starting to get pretty darn tired about like memory erasing. Yeah, yeah, at this yeah. Point. I, I'm, I'm just like, uh, how am I going to get used to this? Like, okay, so the X got her memory erased, but then they still have their memory. What? What? Gotta put it all together. But then this was the grand plan all along. But then this was going against some other things we previously established. And just, what? I definitely feel like we've had a couple of ass pulls and a couple of things which feel like later ideas to the series that aren't quite congruent with some earlier events. So yeah, we have a lot we want to talk about and just full unredacted spoilers. Yeah. Um, although this makes me think like, oh man... I have to try to remember most of this stuff, because it's been, like... Because I think some stuff that might have been mentioned, like, way early in the series will probably pop up down the stretch. If it hasn't already, actually. So what you're saying is we're going to have a really detailed script for it's this It's going to be episode. super detailed. <laughs> we're going to have in some advance, on it. Whenever it ends, we will have a super detailed script so we don't actually mess anything up. There you go. Yeah, but... Because that would be really sad if two self-professed fans like really messed up talking yeah. about something they like. Yeah, that that'd be very bad. <laughs> but in all honesty, like um, I will be sad when it ends though, because um, I yeah, it probably could have ended earlier. There was some, probably some moments where it's like, man, this feels kind of like really filtery and all this stuff. It doesn't matter plot wise or anything like that. But I enjoyed the dynamic between all the characters, so I'm just like, oh man. I'm going to miss this thing. I'm going to miss it. It is a genuinely fun series, and I do like how it's... I mean, it's a bit of a raunchy comedy, but everyone's raunchy in it. Like, there's one scene where the characters are asked, like, okay, what's your favorite type of underwear? And because one of the main powers, and which powers in the series is body switching, every one of the characters has a preference for both female and male style underwear. Yeah. And that just cracked me up, because just everyone is kind of crude. and. Yeah. That feels like being a teenager, honestly. The girls are just as crude as the guys, if not cruder. Right, right. Well, yeah, I kind of, I, I, I kind of wouldn't know that because I went to all boys school, but it, it is what it is. Let me assure you, girls are pretty darn crude. <laughs> um. So yeah, whenever that ends, we will definitely try to do a spoiler cast on that. So look forward to that. Um, I'm not sure if most people were looking forward to hearing this. But in all honesty, based on like just from like talking to people over the years, this was probably something we should have seen coming. Um, Crunchyroll has really grown over the past couple of years, and finally, like I guess you could say that their growth, or I guess you could say they finally hit a little bit of reality when seventeen, uh, seventeen of their engineering or part, some part of their engineering staff got laid off by Elation, which is the people that. Uh, it's their parent company. Their parent right company, now. right, right, right. That's their parent company. So, Elation laid a couple of them off, and there's basically been a bit of controversy. Like, if you just look through like the tweet, Twitter, or like there was like this Reddit post that kind of elaborated on it. Um, it is speculation, so it is what it is. But I would just say this: like, I know some people that worked at the company, and they don't. They're no longer a company now. They moved on. But they basically implied that like Crunchyroll was becoming more, instead of being like for the fans and stuff like that, it was becoming more like yeah business like, which I guess most startups eventually turn into that. So it's like, great, this is bad, and then it's like oh man, it's also expected, isn't it? That that's why capitalism is a ban on society, and what really irks me about this is two things. One is that um, 
this is going based off of, again, some former staffers at Crunchyroll who were talking about this on Twitter, and one of them was linking to a Glassdoor uh, review posting. Glassdoor is a website where you can apply for jobs, see how other people rate the company. And going off one of those, they were saying that one of the um, people in charge of the engineering department or related to it is also the CTO at Ellington. Elation. 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 There we go. Um, again, the parent company. I forget exactly what the position is, but it sounded as if part of the reason they're laying off people at Crunchyroll is so that they can sort of outsource to Elation. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty unethical if you're you know, using one of your companies to take over another company's staff and just like, it really does sound kind of unethical. And as an American, I am very concerned with the ethics of business right now. Yeah. And also, this happens like the day after the engineers at Crunchyroll released the beta version of their HTML5 um, web player. Uh, for folks who don't know, um, HTML5, um, it does things a little differently than Adobe Flash, which is why not everyone switched over to it. I know YouTube has switched over to HTML5, but they're the only one I can think of off the top of my head. And so the fact they do this basically the day after they release the beta is just, uh, it doesn't seem like you actually care about the company if you're not like actively working on stuff like that. So again, this is the opinion of two fans who don't work for Crunchyroll, but we're still kind of busy about and, it on their behalf. And then also, in like one of the statements that were that was made, the... I think the CEO of Elation had mentioned that they had a Crunchyroll had a record year of, of profits or whatever. Like it was a big year for Crunchyroll, and then you announced the layoffs. So it's like, ooh, the opposite of this are bad. <laughs> it's very bad. This is why I don't like capitalism a lot. I'm, I kind of like some aspects of socialism. Yeah, and it just takes you. Oh, no, go ahead. I was gonna say all those socialist-run companies aren't usually very good. We can look at Russia, and that's. It's not very right, good. and then um, like I had interviewed like Victoria a couple, uh, I think this early last year, early last year, and she had talked about one of the things that that she had she was worried about was like oh they were being bought out or something like that. We had like Elation or Auto Media coming in, but then she expected like there was gonna be some big change or whatever, but there wasn't any change at the time. So she was thinking, okay, I didn't have to worry about that. But now, like you look at a year later. Look what's happened. Things have changed. Things are changing. I guess that's just the nature of the. That is, like you mentioned, it's the nature of a business. Um, it's it's. I, I guess it's, it is disappointing, but then I'm at the same time thinking, you wonder if this was in the. This was probably this probably could have happened earlier, honestly. Yeah. And it sucks. It really does suck. We're selfish. We want to support companies that act the way we think is good. And then, uh, as for the people that were laid off, we were really sorry that you guys were laid off, and hope you guys were able to find work really quickly. Mm -hmm. Good paying work. And so, um, in other disappointing news, um, the New York Times is removing uh, their manga and graphic novel on bestseller list, and they haven't actually released an explanation as to why. For those who... Um, haven't ever really seen the New York Times bestseller list um, in print. They actually have several. They've got adult fiction and nonfiction, uh, children's fiction, and I think they also subdivide those up into both series and non-series because Harry Potter just kept making it for so long. They were saying, wait, we need to like give some space to other <laughs> things because that is part of the point of this bestseller list. It's to highlight things which are new and exciting and people like so that other people will like them. I mean, that's why you always see um, paperbacks with, you know, stickers on them that said, you know, New York Times bestseller. And it has been really fascinating over the years to watch which manga series are doing well or not. Um, I know we've had a couple articles on the site about how long it can be before Shoujo makes a New York Times bestseller list and stuff like that. So I'm really disappointed they've taken this away. And they haven't given any explanation to it, and it's not like it was hurting them or anything. It sounds like it was costing them time and therefore money to compile, but just, uh, again, it's a decision which doesn't seem to make much sense to us who aren't part of the staff. So, okay, I read when I was reading up on this, because I, I, honestly, I have not been like, I, I used to pay attention to bestseller lists, and I know like 
some companies they like to mention that for some some of their works. But um, I haven't actually paid much attention to the bestseller list in a while. When I was looking for information on it, I was looking in a and forums, and somebody suggested that you know what. I think the New York Times got tired of Monster Musume being on their list, so they say, "You know what? Let's just let's just get it. Let's get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. We don't need to advertise this anymore." There you go. So that's so it's official. We can blame Monster Musume for the New York Times removing the best sell list. That's that's what I'm gonna go with. No, Monster Girls, you were supposed to be our savior. You were supposed to be the money maker See? for everything. Exactly. No. But, um, but okay. In all seriousness, um, I I did try to talk to some people about this. And I got, and so far I've gotten a couple perspectives on it. Um, <clears throat> I guess the big one is, uh, at least for now, is that it's just like, it, as far as I can tell, it's just a little, it's not, it's a deal, but it's not a big deal. As in, there's still like book scan, and there's probably other sources where you can find out where, like, what is actually selling for manga. But like, but correct me if I'm wrong. Those are ones where you need like a page yeah. Subscription I think I, I, I'm not it. sure, but I, I, as I was told, that you're gonna have to do more searching. It's not gonna be as easy to find it out. As in, like if you just go to New York Times, you'll see what's selling in manga. It's not gonna be that easy. Um, but I guess, but in, it, just in general, it's as far as as of right now, it's not the biggest of deals. On the other hand, on our perspective, uh, two things that stood out to me. When I was talking to some of these people, um, one suggested that, as you mentioned earlier, like it probably cost time for the New York Times. Like, if journalism in general is not in a good spot right now, <laughs> so it's Which like is really it's, sad. It's, not, it's really it, it's right not now. in a good spot right now. So I was suggested that maybe they got rid of this or they cut it for now because of just like costs and stuff like that. Just like the fact that people do have to take time to edit it and stuff like that when they put it up. And the New York Times claims that they're going to try to do a different type of coverage of comics. But until we know what it is, we, we're not sure. So it's like, uh, at least like have the solution ready before you, before you change it, I guess. Uh, we'll have to see on that. And then the other perspective I got um, was just, I guess, a general comics thing. Like, I was told that like mostly uh, women... And women of color dominated the list. So the fact that they're moving Oh, yeah, it, like Raina Telemager had books on the New York Times bestseller list, not for, like, weeks or months continuously, but years. <clears throat> like, it's amazing. Yeah, so the so it feels like right now, with especially with, no, especially with no explanation, it just feels really weak on their part to remove it. That's what I was told. So, Justin, you're in favor of repeal and simultaneously replace, huh? I guess not really. I don't. I don't know. I, it, well, you're saying if you think that they're going to have a new plan. Well, no, I don't. Like I said, I haven't been paying attention to best. Oh, so you didn't want them to repeal it? Yeah, at all. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't really see what's the point. And then just based on what I've been told, and I'm still getting more opinions. So, hope, so I'll see about that. It could change, but um, from my perspective, as somebody that wasn't really paying attention to the best or list um i don't really see why they had to change it I, I i don't i think they should have just kept it as it is i expect your editorial on the end of it um by the end of next week hey are you my are you my editor now god i hope not my grammar is terrible <laughs> i can always tell when my work has been edited because i'm like oh there's a semicolon there but i never use semicolon <laughs> i'm so glad someone's looking at my work <laughs> um well, I do hope that if they do bring it back or some sort of form of it back, that it's actually really good. Because totally, like, comics coverage is, it needs to be big. So, New York Times just getting out of it just it doesn't seem right. Uh, speaking of not right, um, I think this is actually in your real house, Helen, but I'm a little bit, I have to admit, I'm a little bit concerned about this. So, you're going to have to explain yourself about this one. Ooh, the Katsukan thing? Maybe. Yes, it is, actually. Okay, so... Uh, well, we said we, said we were going to talk about politics. Yeah, time. right? We did. Uh, when a new president comes in, they bring in an entirely new staff, and the current U.S. press secretary, therefore, is Trump's hire, um, I think, Sean um, Spicer, yep. who... Um, 
well, frankly, he's not doing a very good job. And so, of course, people went looking through his Twitter feed, trying to see what he said over the years. Apparently, he's had a feud with Dipping Dots ice cream for like five years, which is just crazy. But one thing other people found was this picture of him and someone else posing with a Gundam cosplayer at KatsuCon back in 2013 and saying stuff like, it's a great KatsuCon! Best, <laughs> best like, anime convention! WTF! <laughs> best anime convention, yeah! It's just so weird. So all of us are just like, do we need to be worried that this guy's going to show up at KatsuCon again? I saw um, Lauren Orsini, who's going to be running a panel on Gundam. I think it's like 37 years of Gundam. She's saying, well, if he's going to be in attendance, I should have prepared some alternative facts for my panel. <laughs> if I see him, I'm going to ask him, you know, what his plan is to save anime, or as we say in America, make anime great again. Oh, my God. I, I, so this is just, I, I'm, this is weird. Like, it's one thing where you find out, oh, so-and-so's child likes anime. That's like, oh, okay, makes sense. But when it's like, I like Gundam, and we're like, oh, the, mm? <laughs> uh, Especially since 2013, I think, was before the Sunrise Right Stuff licensing deal, i.e. Gundam was still kind of niche then. It's been growing dramatically in the past couple of years, but that's kind of hardcore anime well, territory so well, wait which Gundam was shown or does it matter I honestly couldn't tell you off the top of my head the, since I still haven't the, seen a lot of Gundam series the, the only thing I can say is that Gundam did, was on Toonami for a bit so maybe like I don't know we had a kid or something like that I don't he might have seen it somewhere who knows but he had to have found out Gundam from somewhere and it was on TV um, I'm looking at the picture now. It kind of looks like the very first Gundam from uh, the first Gundam series, Gundam 0079. Okay, never mind. Then. I don't know that. All right. It kind of looks like that, but I can't be sure because a lot of Gundams look the same. Guys, well, don't hate me, please. Okay. Um, okay, well, two things. One, I think he's going to have, if he actually, if he actually does go to Katsukon, I'm going to assume he's going to have, like, a different level of security <laughs> than any last yeah, came over Katsukon there. is already so crowded, <laughs> guys. Please don't. <laughs> and, and then two, um, so what does this mean? Are you, are you actually, you're actually going to still go to Katsukon, right? Yeah, I, I'm still going to Katsukon. I'm, I'm kind of grouchy this year. I didn't get a hotel room, so I'm going to have to drive in every day from Oh, hotel, no. So. Oh, that's, oh. So I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna have to deal with the Beltway in Friday morning rush hour since um, there aren't that many bridges that go over the Potomac actually, and you've had, you've got to cross one of two rivers, either the Potomac or Anacostia, to get over to that area. And let me tell you, Anacostia is the bad part of DC. What's it? And so like, it's so I am still going to Katsukon, but it's like, oh, this is just so weird. This is even more than DC's usual weirdness. So does this mean you got to, like wake up wake up really early just to get to the convention or something? Not super early. Um, the exciting thing is going to be that um, my panel on Toei was accepted for KatsuCon, and the preliminary time they gave me was like 10.30 in the morning. So it's like, okay, so I'm going to have to get up early, bust my butt over, pick up my badge, and then run my panel immediately. <laughs> Jeez. I'm like, so I'm going to drive over and cosplay, but not in my contacts or wig. So I might be giving this panel in like half cosplay, <laughs> depending on how much time I have. I don't think you want to do a half cosplay. <laughs> no, no, I mean like clothes on, just no makeup, no wig, okay. glasses. Okay. No, no, I will be fully clothed because it is February and it is really cold around here in February. <laughs> it's been weirdly not cold in New York for some reason. Yeah, it hasn't been hot here either. Like, I think basically the coldest weather we've had down here was during Magfest week and so poor people there, but yeah... Um, like this only, year is just weird already, guys. It's only like it's only the twenty eighth. How could it be so weird? I know. I don't know. Anyways, um, well, while you figure that Kasukan stuff out, um, I will be playing Fire Emblem. But you're gonna be playing Fire Emblem in early February, and this isn't until late February. I'm sorry. Uh, Katsukon's um, the weekend of the 17th, and you you have listed that you're going to be playing oh. Fire Emblem Heroes right okay. when it comes out, which is early February, okay. right? Right, okay. So you could totally tell I had no idea when Katsukon was actually going to happen, so there you go. Um, but yes, um, I'm still... I, as a Resident Fire Emblem fan, as in I've played all the games that have been released in the West, I have no idea how to feel about this being on a, on a mobile um, smart or a, or a smartphone, I should say. <clears throat> oh, that's weird. 
Because um, Nintendo's been like, oh yeah, we're going to put stuff on mobile. So first they did uh, Pokemon Go, which literally took over the world for like a month. Well, that wasn't Nintendo. That was maybe um, two. Mechanic. Still, they have like the rights to it or whatever. Okay, fine. Licensing rights, yeah, but I don't think Nintendo was very much involved okay, in okay. the making of okay, it. Okay, fine. Uh, and then they came up with Super Mario Run, which I don't know if it did that well, but um, and especially with the paywall, you have to pay ten bucks to get basically all the stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know about if that did that well, but now they come out with Fire Emblem. I think this is more uh, Den- uh, Dena is working on this as opposed to Nintendo. Like I'm pretty sure they got some input, and then. Based on like the trails and stuff, they definitely had like the artists, like a bunch of artists working on stuff, so they're definitely involved. But um, yeah, it's still gonna be really weird to find to play this on a, on a mobile system. Like for starters, the maps are gonna be smaller. <laughs> um, it's definitely uh, like most Fire Emblem games are not that complex with story, except a couple. So this is definitely gonna be this one's gonna be super simple. But I guess obviously the big thing is that you're gonna have to like it's 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 free, but it's like the gotcha uh, games like that you see in Japan. So you, some stuff you're gonna have to hope you get lucky on a roll, or you're gonna you have to pay a lot of money to get some stuff. So it's like uh, okay, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna be just trying to play it for free for now, or at least see if it can like entertain me. I'm worried if it's gonna actually be entertaining. It looks good, but I don't know if it's gonna entertain me that much. Yeah, the only Fire Emblem pl- game I've ever played was um, either Radiant Path or Radiant Dawn, did, whichever the first did, one did, was. Did you just say Radiant Path? Probably Radiant Path. Did, then. did, did, did you, and, do, um, do you do you know that's not a real name? That it's it's Radiant Dawn. I don't know what I played then. It's it's Radiant Radiant Dawn. Okay, oops, that one. Yeah, I know there's it, there's like a game and there's a sequel and I played the first one and I enjoyed playing it, but I'm just so bad at it. I lose like. Ten times in a did, row in a battle, I'm like, I'm not leaving until I have everybody alive with did, me. You know, look, no, leave no look, survive, leave you no have one to, behind. You have to look at it this way: war, unfortunately, has its sacrifices. So as long as that, it's not one of your stronger units, you could, you just have to deal with it. Dude, I can't live without my healer. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, that, that, that. Well, stop getting your healer in trouble. <laughs> what are you doing? I want to know why healers don't just like max out their defense. It's like. Uh, I feel like this should just be the way... He- if I was a real-world healer, I would be like, I want the strongest defense possible because I know everyone's coming after me first. And even if, I, even if I stick them behind like some of my main fighters, like the enemies will just like move around them and get them. And it's like, ah, oh, because you can't keep the healer too far back because you need them to actually heal people. Especially if you don't want to spend an entire turn, you know, moving someone over there and not being able to move them back. It's, it's just... You're, uh, you're, not, you're not being strategic. you got to make sure you know where your enemies are at. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure you have the right I tried, move spaces. But they move. <laughs> I try. Look, maybe one. You know what? At some point, I'll just send you Fire Emblem advice. I'll just give you a little bit of Fire Emblem advice. You'll get the game, and they'll be like, "Wow, this is actually kind of easy." But on another note, were you playing it on like the higher difficulty levels, or no? I was playing on easy since I knew I was gonna have trouble. So let me see. I think there was a mistake. And was it Path of Radiance? Oh, you say you played Path for Radiance, right? The first game, not the sequel. The first game, yeah. Okay, I think there was an issue where actually no, that's not true. I take that back. I the normal. The, I've heard jokes about Nintendo hard before. No, so. no, I was saying like one of the games in the series had a mis- was a little bit of a mistake. They had like the hard, like the the normal version of the game was actually the hard mode in Japan. <laughs> So it's like, oh, wait, <laughs> uh, this is a mistake. So I think you're playing. I, your easy should be fine. So I, I, I think I think it was a Radiant Dawn where they had the mm-hmm. the normal. Actually, that was the hard one, and the hard one is like the maniac or whatever. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's I, okay. We're, we're enough about that Fire Emblem. Back to this current Fire Emblem. Um, it's Folks, co- look forward to the upcoming Twitch screen of Helen tries to play Fire Emblem yes. while Justin advises. Yes, I will totally give you advice and tell you, don't make this move. <laughs> no, 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 I told you not to make that move. What are you doing? <laughs> I thought you meant the other move. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so um, in actual good news, other than the fact that Justin will be happy. About to say, Fire this Emblem, is not good news. Seven Seas is... Um, t- no, no, that one is good news. 
uh, Seven Seas is going to be teaming up with the Jane Novel Club, which I know we've talked about on a couple of podcasts. They're a newish group which has licensed some light novels from Japan. And Seven Seas is going to be publishing physical versions of a couple volumes. Uh, I think just Grimgar and the Cultic Nine soon, which makes sense. Those are their most high profile titles since they both got anime in this past year. I can't believe it wasn't the but sister that's really one. Cool. Uh, I can't believe it wasn't the sister one. Uh, you mean you can't believe that the little sister who can actually read kanji, you know, I, wasn't their I, I choice? I don't know why it wasn't the choice. I mean, it seems it, it, it seems that the, the nice Seven Seas title that they could totally put in print. Maybe in the future then. But it's really interesting since a lot of times when a manga is licensed digitally, um, it won't get picked up for a print distribution. So I'd wondered if that same stigma might appear, uh, might not appear, um, apply to light novels. But it looks like Seven Seas is perfectly willing to do this. So that's great. I mean, I, I like having a digital option, but I also like having a print option since I've been a manga fan long enough to know the digital doesn't always last. Never forget J Manga. Yeah, never forget. Never forget. Um, it makes me think back to like how all these licenses are at. Like, like I'm thinking, like I think only a few are licensed for like different companies, like manga and light novel, like Grimgar, the mangas of Yen Press. Now Seven Seas is going to release the Grimgar light novel. Um, now I'm thinking, okay, what else is there? Because I'm thinking No Game No Life that has a different um, licensing thing where I, I think Yen has the. The light novel, and then there's the manga for, for No Game No Life, but that's released by Seven Seas, and that's like in some sort of weird hell <laughs> in Japan right now because the I think there's some mm-hmm. sort of weird manga thing is happening there, so it's only one volume out right now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting, that's for sure. I would just say that to me at least. Licensing is complicated, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, speaking of licensing, uh, Tubi, TV, T- Tubi TV, which is an anime streaming, kind of re- I would still say kind of newish uh, anime yeah. streaming site. They've just picked up the rights to stream a- uh, Alien 9, which I feel like I-, I don't actually know much about it, but I know some people that have talked about it. Yeah, I've seen people talk about it over the years, too. And, um, I usually see people talk about it in the same sentence where they talk about um, Shadow Star Naru, I think. And people talk about that in the same sense that they talk about Bokorano. So I think it's another one. Children are horribly used by alien forces to do things. Yeah, so. I was trying to like a little description of it. And it looks like it's pretty violent. But it has like these moy like style characters. So yeah, I think... I think yeah, it seems like yeah. it's definitely going for that kind of visual difference, I suppose you'd put it. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that got picked up officially. That's good, I guess. Has it been licensed here before? I couldn't remember. Um, Central Park Media licensed it, I believe. That was a long time ago, though. Okay, so a while that ago. That was a long then. time ago, though. And then... Justin, you must have added this one, because I don't care about Seri Curie and that it's going to stop streaming on Funimation. Hey! Well, actually, I don't really... I, I actually don't care about it either, but I guess it's only, I think, two things. One, um, it is still another title that's getting taken off of streaming because they're not renewing the license. Um, we've covered that before, so I feel like, oh yeah, we should totally mention it now. And then two, I heard for some reason Sekure, I mean, it's still fan service as, as heck, but some people yeah. actually kind of respect it. Like, it actually is a little bit better than the typical styled harem, as, as far as I, I've heard. Like, I've heard somebody say, like, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't actually be as good as it is. Well, given I am not the target audience for, um, female harems, I will take your word for it. And so this is your, it's not my fault, it's leaving announcement that um, Sekiri will be um, not streaming anymore on February 9th. So go watch your Fighting With Boob shows now. Yeah, you got to watch it now. Don't wait like till like February 8th because they're removing both season one and season two. So you're not going to watch it in 24 hours. Sorry, guys. Actually. Yeah, that's. Well, how long is it? Is um, are they thirteen episodes? I'm gonna assume it's like a twenty-six, maybe. But I still yeah. wouldn't want to watch a harem show. So that would be like, <laughs> so that would be like twenty-six hours or so. So yeah, you can't do that in a day. I'm like, no. <laughs> For stars, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't want that to do that health-wise. Honestly, <laughs> just thinking of seeing like mm-hmm. all that fan service for most of the day can't be healthy for you. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, okay, maybe this might interest you since Sekiro didn't interest you. Um, Kodansha, License to Your Eternity. Well, you see, I didn't really like a silent voice when I was Oh, there, but no! The, <laughs> but the preview images for To Your Eternity, um, that's the one in the polar setting, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Yeah, those preview images looked cool, so I'm definitely kind of interested in it, but I just didn't like a silent voice when I tried it out, so... You're like one of the ten people I know that don't like silent voice. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a minority, but just... Eh. But yeah, that... Kodansha licensed it. Um, I... It's out. It should be out digitally. Uh, actually, it should already be out digitally. At least the first volume, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think they're putting out like the first ten chapters or so. Um, sometime in late January. It sounds like it's still a pretty new it, series. H- Helen, so I think that speaks to Helen, how well a silent voice has done for them. Helen, what? it's late January. What? <laughs> it's late January. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but as I was saying, I feel like this speaks to how well a silent voice did for them. If they're picking up another series by the same manga call it this early in its run that's true that is true and then um i don't live in new york but justin lives in new york so i'm assuming you go to new york um international child's film festival if you can right yes i well so you're gonna be trying to see um um here um hirune hime i guess i'm guessing um if there's still tickets <laughs> um i because I, I kind of i saw this late unfortunately um, I guess the good thing is I think oh, it's no. airing around. I think it's supposed to air in March. Also, it's not like your name, which is completely sold out. <laughs> like I, I bet you, as soon as it was announced, it sold out in one day. So, um, this is. I, I think there's still tickets available for it. But um, this is uh, this is directed by Kenji Ka- uh, Ka- Kamiyama, who you probably know as the guy who directed Ghost, Ghost in, the Ghost in the Shell anime anime and. Wait, what? The Ghost in the Shell stuff. He's the K- Kenji Kamiyama. This sounds quite different. <laughs> hey! Um, Anson and the Magic Tablet, a.k.a. Hirini Hune. Um, it's apparently directed by Kenji Kamiyama. I mean, I wasn't saying it was a bad thing. I was just thinking, wow, that sounds like really different um, source material. <laughs> or this material. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've noticed in DC there are some kind of interesting looking ads for um, the Ghost in the Shell live action movie on... Um, uh, you can see on the Metro, some of the Metros have, like, TV ad screens. Um, they're saying things like, you took my life, I think. So, I'm going to be interested to read the reviews of that live-action movie when it comes out. Oh, yeah, it's going to be very fun to see. I guess, like, a, for perspective, like, you have the people that don't watch anime that much, but then they know of Ghost in the Shell, probably. The, like, at least, like, the 1995 film. And then you have the regular anime hardcore fans who are just like, oh my god, why... Why are they doing this? Yeah, I just want to hear it from, like, the hardcore anime fans. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. But we're not there yet. We're, we're a ways away from that. Yeah, because I think that's also happening in March. So uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about in March. All these movies, Yamada-kun. Uh, spring season will also be wrapping up around then, so we'll have a couple series to talk about. We'll see if Justin you, you, ever continued with can, Dragon Maid. Can, we'll see how I feel about can, Akka by the end. You can totally tell Helen has already mentally moved on from the winter season when she mentions the spring season is wrapping up. Man, I'm watching only like five shows right now, <laughs> and three of those are sequels, so it's like... Let, let me... <laughs> This is a good season for me to make some dents in my backlog. Yeah, I think I'm only keeping up with really eight new shows, and they're all really average. Only eight, well, he says. Well, the most I ever okay. did this season was about eight. Okay, let me see. I think that's not true. There are a few that are obviously pretty good. Gabriel Dropout mm-hmm. is pretty good from what I watched. Wait, what? Gabriel Dropout. Um, Akiba Strip. No, sorry, Akiba Strip. Not Strip, Trip. Well, you know that that's the wordplay, it's, right? It's it's <laughs> it, it is definitely wordplay. Um, it is unrelentingly it is unrelentingly crazy, and not and unap- unapologetic too. But it's very fun. I saw one. I saw a clip for one of the previews, and it was like, "Wait, are we supposed to make up fake titles for stuff like Street Fighter?" We're like, "No, we got permission to do this." And it was like that. That's kind of funny, yeah, honestly. That, that and then they 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 had a call um uh, a call Junior Burgers thing. So it's like, wait, what? What is, what is this? What is happening? How can they let this happen? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a fun show. 
Um, definitely a surprise. I didn't. I know like I had watched a video on like Giant Bomb and they had played the game and it didn't look that interesting at, at all. So the fact that I'm even watching this is like, wait, there is actually a video game anime that's actually kind of good. <laughs> what is happening? What universe am I am I living in? Uh, the worst one. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's I'm not watching that much either. So maybe maybe I'll just go back to watching finishing Shirobako. Maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, I still need to finish up Ushio and Dora. I'm really close, but I'm gonna be doing that. And oh, I'm looking forward to Pretty Cure since new season of Pretty Cure hasn't started yet. Since they're weird, they always start the new season in February instead. Mm. And this year is basically <laughs> Tokyo Mew Mew Pretty Cure since. They've got five characters, and they're both animal and food themed. And you just look at them and you go, wait a minute. I've seen this before in my youth. I have vague memories of a bad manga in high school. <laughs> Tokyo Mew Mew really was not that good. From what I read. I just remember the four kids version. Fight me. I just remember the four kids. Fight me, listeners. I just remember the four, four kids version. That's all I know. It's literally the only thing I know. Yeah, I didn't see that. I just read the manga. <laughs> and yes, I will fight anyone. Meet me in the back parking lot at Denny's. We will have a throwdown. Look, we, we can't be just threatening just people like that. We just can't do it. I'm sorry. This isn't a threat, Justin. This is a promise. Oh, boy. Um, and with that, I think we should probably end this podcast. Um, where can we find you? Well, actually, no. You yeah, want to start fights. Fun. You should be introducing yourself. Okay, so if you want to start a fight with me on Twitter, let's go. You can find me at Wandering Dreamer. And you can find me on Twitter at Kami underscore Nomi. Please, uh, if you listen... Who does not want to start fights with you? So yeah. Start them with me. I don't even use Twitter that much. Or I, if I do, I'm usually advertising the site. Or I just find something really interesting. Or I'm whining about an anime. Like Handshakers. <laughs> and speaking of advertising, we actually have a giveaway going on right now. Um, I think it's still going to be giving, um, going on. Yes, it's going to be going on. podcast drop. Yep. And... We're giving away um, two copies of the first volume of Erased, which Yen Press has graciously given us. Uh, Erased, um, haven't had a chance to read the manga version yet, but as people probably remember, that was an anime last year, last year's Winter Noe Tamina show. Um, uh, Boku Daki ga... Inai Machi. Uh, machi In- inai, inai, inai Machi. Inai Machi, um, the town where I don't exist. So we have two hardcover editions with, I think, dust covers on them, so... Go ahead, enter the contest. It's pretty simple. You just need to like retweet or comment on our stuff. Have at yeah, it, people. I, I will have a free manga. You will get us. You will see a link. Oh, uh, for those who go to the uh, the USG dot com site, you'll get you'll see the the link to the the, con- the giveaway page. Um, but yeah, if you just tr- tr- look for us on Twitter, or Facebook, or check out the site, you'll find it. And you can have a chance to free- get free manga. Can't go wrong, right? Just just live in North America. That's all. The, that's the only requirement. And Justin, I expect you to finish reading the, the review copy soon so I can get my hands on the review oh, copy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and just to let you know that it is really, like, the, the hardcover does look pretty seem pretty good. It does seem pretty good. That's good. That's um, good. But, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's about it. Just remember to check us out, listen to us, review us on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. Like, if we're doing bad, if we're doing good, just let us know. We'll, 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 Please we'll, let us we'll, know if our audio is terrible because we're having a hard time telling. <laughs> So, until next time, guys, bye. Bye.